mentorship, inspiring the next generation. So we want to bring up our mentor moderators, Ms. Amenta Bell Richardson and Mr. Isaiah Dornelis, Morgan State University engineering students who will be interviewing Dr. Victor Lawrence and Mr. James West, National Inventors Hall of Fame inductees. Let's welcome them up. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Amenta Bell Richardson. I am a senior electrical and computer engineering major here at Morgan State University, and I'm here with a colleague of mine. Um, I'm Isaiah Dornelis. I am an industrial engineering major here at Morgan State. And um, today um, we're doing an interview with Dr. Lawrence, and, and we're, we also have Mr. West joining us virtually. So to start off, we uh, had a direct question for Mr. Jim West. We just wanted to know a little bit about your background. Where do you come from and um, what do you do? Well, currently I'm a professor at Johns Hopkins University in electrical and computer engineering. I also have an appointment in mechanical engineering. Uh, that's a real deep question. Uh, I was born in Virginia, as you know, deep south, and suffered all of the anxieties and difficulties that other black people suffered. Um, I was fortunate to uh, have um, uh, a mother who was technically inclined. Uh, she was. Um, okay, Dr. Lawrence, how about you tell us a little bit about yourself while we wait? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, you and didn't hear me at all? It's a pleasure for me really to, to be here. I've never been to Morgan State and I'm looking forward to meeting some of the students and maybe some of the professors at the end of this uh, meeting. Okay, my life, uh, story is a very uh, interesting one. I was born in Ghana and I did my high school up to my high school in Ghana and then I went on to United Kingdom, did my bachelor's, master's and PhD and then I came over. I was recruited by Bell Laboratories so I was very happy to hear uh, I think Dr. Hasley talk about uh, Belco but that was all part of the Bell system. Now, I um, became interested in engineering and science. When uh, we had, when we were growing up, we didn't have much facilities. So what one of the things we had was the Voice of America. And there, it was the time when President Kennedy then gave a speech that by the end of the century, he would have someone, a man, visit the, being on the moon. So we were just uh, marveled at this because we would sit down on the tree and look up and you see the moon very far away and how can you ever have a human being on this moon? But it wasn't long, uh, about uh, 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 maybe a less than a year, two years later, then uh, Senator John Glenn was the first person to orbit the earth. And so we said that, well, this is possible. And that's what stimulated my interest in engineering and uh, science. And so I went on to, I got a scholarship to United Kingdom, uh, Imperial College London University, where I did uh, my education. And I was very lucky to have um, a chance to be recruited by uh, AT&T, then recruits worldwide. And AT&T came and recruited me and brought me down to New Jersey. So that was how I started my uh, career and uh, interest into science and education. Thank you for that. That was very interesting. So could you tell us more about how you came to start your in your field? Oh, okay. So I, uh, it was all by chance as the, the earlier lady said that she, she, she was lucky to have the computer falling down anyhow from the track, but I, um, what happened was that uh, after my uh, bachelor's degree, I got a chance to get to 
um, to start my master's. And there I was very much aggressive and very much enthusiastic about things. So I saw the professor, the head of department there, and he asked me what I wanted to do. I had heard about one dimensions, two dimensions, three dimensions. I told him I want to do something in three dimensions. I wanted to uh, collect waves and feed them back. So he looked at me and he said that, uh, okay, I understand you. He was very, very patient and uh, he said, okay, uh, get into the lab and do this experiment. You see, at that time, the transistor had just been invented in 1956 and I'm talking about 1965 and so uh, 65, 68. So he gave me this uh, transistor to do, experiment to do in the lab. And I went into the lab and I was so enthusiastic about that. The transistor means one, so zero. You have the thing, you know, it's for amplification. So I was very happy about that. And, uh, and so he said, okay, with the ones or zeros, what can you do? And that led me into digital signal processing, digital filtering and digital signal processing, which was at the forefront of converting things from analog to uh, digital. And that was uh, uh, what led me into this digital signal processing and what I, I uh, ended up uh, in Bell Laboratories in New Jersey working on. And then of course I rose through the system and so you ask uh, this thing, I was a member of technical staff and I ended up as the vice president for all of advanced communications technology for at and uh, available. So that was uh, my brief career. But you have another question before we talk about uh, Yes, actually. Um... Now that you speak of dig digital signal processing, I'm glad to see that, you know, engineering is still the same. Uh, I went through that class, just got out of it. Uh, my next question for you was actually to let us know who mentored you, who brought you through your journey and, you know, made you who helped yeah. make who you are today. Well, there are many people that uh, did. It can start from my uh, elementary school days, <laughs> but the most important person it's really Jim West, and he's here with us. I guess he's on the phone. It's a, it's a shame that uh, uh, maybe you cannot hear him, but uh, you know we are speaking through this microphone. He invented it. He made this possible. All his microphones were used in many applications in medical, health, and in space exploration. But uh, he was very crucial in uh, uh, helping me in my uh, career uh, at uh, Bell Laboratories. Um, in fact, he has done so much that not only me, I mean, you have now, you have a mentor and a mentee, both on a program together, but, but he has helped me uh, so much and not only me, but so many other people. And uh, so since he's not here, uh, since he cannot, uh, you cannot hear him, let me say a few things. Uh, he has, you know, he set up a program in uh, AT&T and the program was really to, uh, uh, recruit black engineers. You know, uh, earlier on, you heard the lady talk about uh, Belco, and uh, uh, she was one of the recipients of the program that Jim West set up. And Jim West recruited so many people. Some of them became deans of universities. For instance, uh, one of them became the dean of Cornell University. Uh, one of them is the, is the Vice Chancellor of uh, University of California. Uh, another one that I was talking to you earlier on, it's uh, 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 Professor Bill Massey of uh, uh, Princeton. So there have been so many of them, uh, including me. And so mentorship is very, very important. Mentorship and networking is very important and, and the help. So if my advice to all of you is to look for good mentors, and do a lot of networking because your mentors are good, but the networking you do is even much stronger and much better. You help each other. So going off of that, from your experience with Mr. West and the people he's helped, um, why would you say it's important to have a mentor? Well, it's important to have a mentor because uh, it's the help in growing up, you know, 
you think you know everything, but you really don't know, or you think you know how to handle yourself, but you really don't. And so you need somebody to go to, to speak to the person. And a good mentor, you know, always listens and listens more than uh, he really speaks to you. Because, you know, God created us to have two ears and one mouth. So we should listen twice mm -hmm. as much as, as we speak. So uh, a good mentor does that. And it's important for you to reach out to someone and ask the person for help. Never be shy about it. Never, never be shy about it. And then also work with your colleagues and network within your 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 sphere of uh, influence on the topic of mentoring you've done so much in life and you really are an inspiration and a mentor to many people in this world could you tell us a little bit about your induction into the hall of fame well the induction into the hall of fame was one of the great uh, uh, achievements that I was happy about. But you know, it doesn't come overnight. It's a long, long, long process. And it started with my PhD thesis in the uh, United States, in England. Uh, and there, well, I was lucky when the professor told me, really, he was very polite. He says, you don't know what you are talking about. Just go and do this experiment and uh, come back. Um, I was very grateful because that led me into a new field, a field, brand new field that people had just started, and it was the field of digital filtering and digital signal processing. And uh, because I was able to be in that field, that led me to do some great things. And, you know, um, although I did not patent what I did in my PhD, I came and patented it when I was with at and &T. And so uh, uh, that was uh, the recognition that I had. But I had tremendous responsibility, not only in um, just digital filtering, but I also was, worked with speech processing. And I was also one of the first also to do work in modems, that is transmitting uh, data information from one location to the other. And I did the very first experiments that connected uh, a transmission between UK, US, and uh, Japan. And uh, that led to many standardizations. And then I also worked in HDTV, high definition TV. And the result of that gave me uh, the Emmy Award in 1996. So we had an Emmy Award for our work on uh, the high definition uh, TV. I also reached out into trying to see how I could help Africa. And so I worked on submarine cables to connect the U.S. I built a submarine fiber around Africa to connect the U.S. to many of the African uh, countries. That also led to an Ivory <clears throat> Award that, that I had. That's incredible. So this built on to uh, the National Inventors Hall of Fame. But you can also do it. You can all become inventors. I'm not, uh, I'm not the brightest or the greatest of, of all. I'm sure that you folks, giving yourself, giving enough time in a couple of years, you will all be able to invent some uh, great things that will change the world. Could you tell us more about the industry you work in and some of the challenges you face? Huh. Um, I've been in the uh, telecommunications industry right from the beginning when I started looking at moving things from analog to digital. When I started, the whole network was all analog. But uh, with, the, with the work that we did, we moved from analog to digital, and so we have an all digital network uh, today. But uh, there are many challenges, and the challenges come. Neither did I know, for instance, that uh, um, we could send, uh, we, were, we did the early stages of the internet where we could send information from uh, a, a, a computer or from a terminal to a computer far away and uh, maybe, uh, 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 but all within the internet. So those have been some challenges. I had some challenges in speech processing that I did challenges in the uh, uh, video processing I mentioned. And of course, the, the greatest challenge was 
how can you bring internet connectivity to Africa? And that I was very lucky that AT&T was interested in that and they let me pioneer the work of bringing, we called it Africa One. Today, you know, uh, there are many companies like Google has got this mimicked it and it has something called Aquino. Uh, Facebook is also building another one called Two Africa, but it started with AT&T and the opportunity that we, we did have. But the industry is very huge and very large. Uh, today, we talk about uh, uh, driverless cars. They are all in the communication industry. Uh, how can you drive, uh, how can you have driverless cars? We also talk about uh, uh, factories and ro robotic factories where there is no human in the factory, but it's all robots and uh, moving things around. So the industry has grown and it continues to grow. It started with 1G wireless, now we have 5G wireless. Uh, it had uh, these uh, microphones that uh, uh, Jim West invented. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and so it's been a very dynamic field. Thank you. Well, I'm glad to see you've overcome those challenges. Yeah. I'm glad to see that you were able to overcome those challenges and with overcoming them comes success. So, and what, what tips would you have for success for really anybody in the audience? Okay. You know, I look at it this way. Look at a river flowing. In a river, the water that is to touch is the last of what has passed and the beginning of what is to come. This is not my quotation, it's the Da Vinci, uh, Leonard Da Vinci's uh, quotation. So you look at things and I know that you are living, uh, uh, you are graduating this year, and uh, therefore the, the things that I can say is that, well, whatever you learn today, don't think it's only for today, but it's also for tomorrow. So you have really been building on uh, the, the, and, and helping yourself into the future. Uh, please do not uh, forget the networking that you've done when you are in college. Mm -hmm. uh, keep those friends. People will always say that make new friends, but you should always keep the old. One is silver and the other is gold. And brows may wrinkle and hairs grow gray, but friendship and networking knows no decay. So my, my advice is uh, keep up your networking, build up some more networking to do this. Be humble, that's the most important thing. And uh, you know, my pride when I was talking about three dimensions, I think even now, I don't think it would have been feasible. Uh, so the professor looked at me, but I was in all humility, what he told me to do, I went to do it. And that led me on to uh, opening the whole area of uh, uh, analog to digital processing. So my advice is uh, be humble and work whatever you do. Work hard. Don't let any day go by without you working hard. Thank you. So with the importance of networking and getting to know people, is there anyone specific who's inspired you on your road to success or through the challenges you face? Well, I told you there was Jim West. I don't know. Can you hear us, Jim? I guess he cannot. But yes, he yeah, I can hear you. Oh, he I can hear you. Jim can hear you. Jim? Dr. Lawrence we're, Lawrence, we're going to try if we, we can hear Dr. Uh, Mr. West again. Oh, okay. Then he should say, say some things. <laughs> yeah. Good, I, Mr. West, can you try to say something? One. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, many times. I, I think it's hilarious that um, with the invention of the ubiquitous microphone being heard has been a problem. Victor, thank you so much for the mentioning uh, our relationship. Um, I'd also like to point out that um, that, that, that the venue is also important. Uh, there are 30 uh, black inductees into the National Inventors Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Four of them, of them come from Bell Lab. Come from not only Dr. Lawrence, but uh, but, uh, but uh, Dr. Marion Croc, Marion Croc, Marion, and 
Link Hawkins. Uh, and uh, just so that you know, Link Hawkins patents, which he taught how to cure polyethylene so it wouldn't degrade under UV radiation, radiation from the sun. And this allowed sheathing on not only telephone cables, but power cables to convert from lead to a power cable. To a polymer. To a polymer. To a polymer. I hope uh, that. I guess we could eat Yang, but I know what he was trying to say. I hear myself he was talking about the environment. And that. true, indeed, if you are lucky to be in an environment that uh, uh, and, and encourages creativity and an environment where everyone is uh, uh, working very nicely together and networking. It goes on a long way. I think he was talking about the environment we had in Bell Laboratories, where the transistor was invented, the laser was invented, uh, software C, uh, Unix and C was invented, uh, the satellite communications was invented. I can go on and on and on. The microphone was invented, the telephone was invented. So I guess uh, the, the, he was talking about that environment. And you take advantage of that environment. Maybe you cannot have that environment in every industry, but I'm sure you could find uh, uh, opportunities uh, there are. And you can link things. You're working uh, uh, electrical and communication engineering. Um, when you uh, understand that you are going to Northrop, and uh, I wish you well there, Thank but you, uh, you know, Northrop uh, has a lot of uh, flies, a lot of drones, invents drones, and all that is done mm -hmm. by communications, mm -hmm. in addition to the mechanical engineering. So, And you are also going to uh, graduate in industrial uh, engineering, and therefore you are going to talk about uh, uh, factories and their uh, processes that uh, go along with that. And in the factories, as I mentioned, now there are going to be factories that there's no human being. It's all robots. And in fact, that levels the playing ground, you know. So when you ask me, I'll say, oh, I can put up a factory in Chicago. It's the same factory that I can have in China. And therefore, there's, China doesn't have that uh, advantage anymore of having humans working in the factory, while our, uh, 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 we, our costs are so expensive. But it will be all now be robots. So it will be the ingenuity. How do you program it? And how can the robot be as uh, intelligent as a human being? And therefore, you worry about artificial intelligence and things. I understand. Have you used this uh, chat GBT? Yes. Some of you have. No? <laughs> hmm? Be careful of that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so you never know how the world is going. I never believed uh, that these things could happen. But uh, they are here, and we must take uh, advantage of that. Whatever you invent cannot be uninvented. You must think about the best ways of using it. I guess somebody, the person who told me this was my professor, but he was talking about the atomic bomb at that time. <laughs> he said it has been invented. We can never uninvent it, but we have to let human beings become as uh, wise and as nice so that they Thing is never used. Can somebody Thank have you. a question? Yeah. Um, for my next question, I would like to take a question from the audience. Just one person, please, and then my colleague will close us out. You're welcome to choose. Oh, no. I, uh, any, anyone? This is <laughs> okay. So we have two. Yeah. Okay. You go first and then you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Go ahead. Hello. Yeah. You, you need the microphone, is it? Okay, stand and speak loud then. Hi, my name is Randy Opong, and um, oh, Opong. my question to you is, what's the most um, challenging question or the most memorable question that you've ever gotten in your mm -hmm. time? The most memorable that has really impacted you and made you think outside of the box when answering? Okay. Yeah, Mr. Pong, I believe you come from Ghana too. Yes, please. Okay. Your name just uh, stands out. Yeah, the, uh, you know, I've had this many times, people have tell, told me that something cannot be done. And they say something cannot be done. But then you say that, look, let's try. 
let's keep trying, let's keep trying. So there have been many of those. And uh, I guess the first one I told you, my professor told me that I didn't know what I was talking about. He said, oh, you want to work in three dimensions? Why don't you just start in one or two? And <laughs> so, so when they told me to start in, gave me, uh, gave me the chance to uh, work in two, he gave me the transistor and he said, this is new, it has been invented. Brand new. The trans you know, before the transistor, people were using uh, uh, tubes. I don't know whether you folks uh, know that. Now it's only a transistor. So he gave it to me, and I was one of the first to go into the lab, put on the, the, the voltage attached to it, and look at the ones and zeros that are coming up, the amplification. And, uh, and so that, th those are the things. But there have been many. I mean, I can assure you, many, many, many things. And I have failed many, many, many times. When I started this uh, fiber optic ring around Africa, it uh, was around 1995, but you know, it was never succeeded until 2010 or 2012. So it takes time, but you must have patience and endure. Oh, wow. So we Thank have one you. more question. Wait. Thank you so much. You know, no, there's one more minute. Just one more <laughs> minute. Mm -hmm. He said when he does that, he said, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Lawrence. I'm about to give you another good Ghana name. My name is Eric Padmore, and I am with the National Institutes of Health Small Business uh, Entrepreneurial Development Office. Um, one of the things that we see in the biomedical space is really the dearth of individuals uh, of color, of minorities, um, in gate, proportionally, that is, engaged in biomedical sciences. And I imagine that when you started your career, uh, perhaps there were not many individuals like yourself uh, who were involved in the type of engineering that you were. So I wonder if you could speak to cultivating mentors uh, and developing that kind of network when you're essentially one of a very few or perhaps uh, alone in your field and you need to to develop that kind of mentorship and have those kinds of people uh, help who helped you develop your career, how you did that. Okay, thank you. I think that's a very important thing because that really is important to the audience here and those here. Um, and I'll look back to Jim West again. When he started, I think he was, there were only three uh, black engineers in Bell Laboratories, there were only three. I think he was the third person, either the second or the third. But uh, he went on to form a program, which uh, the lady, uh, I think uh, her name is uh, Dr. Dr. Hartley. I think she was part of that program. Uh, so Jim started that program. So you are kept perfectly right that there are only few, but uh, you should not uh, 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 be, uh, you should not be frightened because once you are in there, other people can come and join you. So that is how I look at it. And uh, in, uh, in medicine, it's uh, something that you always look for the appropriate, te appropriate technology. I'm sure not all the things for blacks uh, in medicine, uh, in medicine, perhaps uh, some of the sicknesses are more, blacks are more of some of the sicknesses like sickle cell and other things. Uh, than you will get in the white community. The same thing in the white communities will have this. And therefore, it is up to all of us to be able to work on the appropriate technology to help our communities. Yeah, if, if you can But you it's hear a me? very important question. I haven't answered it well. I know I haven't answered it well, and I will talk to you at the break since we only have a minute, yes. Thank you for your wise words. And okay. I want to thank you for taking the time out of your day to come out here and speak to everybody. And thank you to Mr. Jim West as well. If you can hear us, Hello, um, I can hear you. I'm sorry, we didn't get the opportunity to speak with you, but I'm glad you still came. Folks, can you hear me? Um, Mr. West would like to say a few things. Uh, am I on? Victor, uh, thanks so much for um, uh, uh, covering for me uh, since my voice uh, could not be heard. I'd just like to add one thing. When you go to an organization or when you're hired by an organization, one of the things that I did in, in the very early stages of, of uh, 
of um, uh, looking for employment was how many other people that looked like me were at that organization. And they indeed turned out to be Link Hawkins, who turned out to be my mentor. And the story that the, what I want to leave with you is mentoring is vital. Look for someone to mentor as well as mentoring, receiving mentorship. Thank you very much.